Hello, this is Dr. Patrick Hanley, and today I'd like to show how to analyze an aircraft using Stallion 3D. The first thing to do is to import the STL file. So to do that, click the design menu, import STL file. Then click the file menu from that dialog box, open, and today I'm looking, want to do a Corsair from World War II and take some time to come in and this is the aircraft what we want to do is to in the top view have the aircraft point into the flow direction so to do that i'm going to rotate it up then i'm going to turn it um, and then i'm going to rotate it down so now we have the aircraft in the top view and then we click the side view just to make sure everything is okay then after that we have to scale it and it is in um, millimeters so I want to use the scale factor 0 0.001 and so we can input the aircraft that way so what we want to do next is to go to the design um, editor and we see we have imported a wireframe of the aircraft here and there is a default surface that's always in the design editor what I want to do is to delete that because we're not going to use that wing so just click delete and it's gone and we can then visualize the geometry of this aircraft and we can see in three dimensions we, we have the aircraft within Stallion 3D. What we can what we notice here it seems as though we have a hole and we have some reverse surfaces. So um, I can go back to the design menu, look at the import of the STL file again, and I may want to make sure that the geometry has holes reverse surfaces. And if we click this option then Stallion 3D will solve the problem even with those holes and reverse surfaces. So um, the next thing we have to do is set up the um, flow field conditions. So the next step in the solution is clicking the flow button and here we have the default settings. So I want, want to have about two degrees angle of attack, um, no side slip and I want to set the speed at 150 meters per second which is over uh, 300 miles an hour and next I go to the force moments tabs and I looked up on Wikipedia for such an aircraft and the reference area for this particular STL file would be about 40 40 square meters and the the moment reference length which is like the chord length is about 2.8 so 2.8 meters this aircraft is a little bit bigger than the than the um aircraft i read about on wikipedia so i look um that i think that's all um that i have to do now so click ok and um, the next step of course is to go and set up the CFD solver and we click set up CFD solver we want to have about close to a million cells and the initial um, starting of the cells has the X and the Z have twice the resolution of the Y the Y is along the span so we uh, set an aspect ratio um, which is has more resolutions along the cord than along the span. Then I want to set the flow model. Here we, we could use the Euler equations, the compressible Euler equations, the Navier-Stokes, the laminar Navier-Stokes, but we are going to use the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations. Um, one, when we imported this geometry, it is in the center of the origin. 
but we want to make the flow field around that geometry and we want the flow field length to be about 400 um, meters it's always good to make the flow field um, length about 10 times more than the length of the geometry so and then I want to start the flow field at negative 200 upstream in the x y and, and in the x y and z direction so this sets up the flow the flow domain and then we look at the boundary on this flow domain uh, we have options for ground effect or have symmets plane of symmetry in the, on the y direction we're going to solve the whole problem so no ground effect radiation boundary condition and i'm not going to have a restart file so the next thing to do is just click the cft solver button and say um generate the grid and solve the flow and styling in 3d will automatically generate the grid and solve the flow once we generate the grid and solve the flow um, once we click that menu it will invoke um, the grid generation algorithms and also it will pop up the once the, gen the grid is generated it will start the flow solver and as you can see the flow solver has been going for a while and a few hours and it the grid that was generated is about 800,000 cells and what we can do now or at any time during the flow process is to take a look at the solution and what I would like to do is to just pause the solution and to, to do that um, we can say stop solution and we can restart it at any time it is, you do not have to but it's, I think it's good practice to do so um, so once the flow solver stops we can look at the solution click the visualization menu and click view 3d solution and this will show the pressure on the surface of the aircraft that is the default solution so at this point in this in in the convergence process we see this is the solution of the pressure um, around the aircraft and what we can do is look at the graphs we can show the legend and this really gives us a map of the um, solution uh, of the pressure we can also look at all the variables uh, we click visualization menu and we click surface color options look at the velocity and we click the update and then this will give us um, a view of the velocity distribution on the surface and basically we are solving the, the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations so we can see um, uh, some sort of a, a low velocity boundary layer type flow on the surface we're not looking at the surface itself but near the surface um, the first cell um, on or of the flow field Another thing we can do at this point in the solution is to look at the aerodynamics coefficient. To do so, we click aerodynamic data, click the aerodynamic um, coefficients options, and we see that the lift coefficient is 4 0 0.445. Lift to drag ratio is around 16. And um, we see that the moment coefficient is negative 0.6. But let's look at that a little bit closer. We can see um, here that, that that moment coefficient is measured around this datum point. And what we want to do is to measure it around the CG. For an aircraft, the CG is a little bit ahead of the quarter cord of the wing. So let's move that datum point over there. And we saw that is around a uh, distance about 3 meters down. And according to Wikipedia, the weight of this aircraft is um, 12,000 pounds. That doesn't really matter right now for our calculation. So now we have the datum point at this location. 
area which is a reasonable CG location and then we look at the aerodynamic coefficients again and we see now that the pitching moment is still negative and it's negative one two four that tells us that the angle of attack of two degrees is a little bit high and the aircraft is trying to pitch its nose down so the real angle of attack that matches the the elevator the tail condition and the wing on conditions of this aircraft is not two but it's a little it's less than two and we will finally i'd like to take a look at the pressure coefficient plot along the span of the aircraft and we, i'd like to see what would the uh, plot the pressure coefficient along this location along this location and maybe even along the tail location to do that we have to go to the graphs and and look at the surface graph options we start with y equals to two meters and if we look at this um, we see y equals to two meters is somewhere along here so we do the graph and we see we have a pressure coefficient plot <coughs> of um, along the y equals to two station and we have and we can also look at this location let's say this is y is equal to around five meters do set graph option y equals to five and then we go and we press on the graph and we see now we have the pressure coefficient plot along y equals to five meters let's see the tail location if we look at the tail in this graph we see we see we, the tail is somewhere at x before x equals to 9 and we can look at this location at y equals to 1.5 so we go to the graph options um, we say for x greater than 9 to x say greater less than 20 and we look at the location 1.5 that will give us the tail location and we press the pressure coefficient graph and we see we do have we can plot the pressure coefficient at that tail location we can move in a little bit more move out a little bit more at x say equals at y equals to 2 again graph options y equals to 2 and we can graph pressure coefficient and we see the pressure coefficient at that location of course um, as before we can look at the data for all of our graphs at y equals to 2 y equal to 5 at the tail location y equal to 1.5 and y equals to 2 we can see that data we can also save that data as a CSV comma separated value files and we can import it into say a spreadsheet like Excel so that's how one can perform a complete analysis of an aircraft using Stallion 3D um, in summary we read in the um, STL file um, we set the flow conditions we set up the flow field and then we can um, generate the grid and solve the flow after setting up the CFD conditions that is the number of cells and the flow solver um, that we wish to use so um, th that that's that's all it takes to to perform that complete mm -hmm. solution in the stallion 3d software before we go I want to mention that I got this um, file is it's an excellent file of uh, a Corsair aircraft from GrabCAD and um, you can visit GrabCAD to get a bunch of other different files for your CFD analysis this is Dr. Patrick Hanley 
from Hanley Innovations. Uh, please visit us at hanleyinnovations.com.